Today, we have a story where a DM decides to force trauma as a plot point. Let's throw another log on the fire. This is a story from years and years ago. I was in high school and having a rough time, so my uncle reached out to me and invited me to play D&D with him and some of his friends. The group numbered around 10 to 15 players with a regular weekly session with just five of us, as well as a second weekly session which people could pop in and out of and people would rotate between DMing. I was the youngest of the group at 16, with the oldest being 50, so we had quite the age range. So right before this session is due to start, two players drop out and me and my uncle are called in last minute to fill out the party. In the brief the DM gave us, all seemed normal. We were hunting some werewolves through a standard grim fantasy land. Great, I play a paladin lady knight princess who had fallen in love with a princess from the neighboring land and was training so she could rescue her friend slash lover from the dragon guarded tower. Unfortunately, her preference for women is relevant. We're investigating a tavern with some girls living upstairs. It was definitely a brothel, but the other players hadn't put two and two together. In a closet, we found some bed sheets with tiny specks of blood, and I started having a sinking feeling about where this was going, but again, it seemed to be going over everyone else's head. So that evening, one of the women from the tavern approaches our table and starts to flirt. The DM said that I must now roll a wisdom save with disadvantage simply because I liked women despite my vows of everlasting love and faithfulness to my princess in the tower. And sure enough, I failed. So my character is led away and handed a drink. This begins to trigger a lot of traumatic memories for me because drinks, with more alcohol than I thought, was how I was abused in real life. When I said she doesn't drink it, DM replies that my character has no reason not to and tells me not to metagame. My uncle pipes up and reminds him that we're hunting werewolves so she wouldn't want to be drunk. My character tries to leave but fails a save against command which forces her to stand still. Then, five men enter the room and use sleep to knock my character out. I won't speak for other trauma survivors, but personally, I don't like even thinking about the possibility or suggestion of something like what happened to me happening to my characters, anyone else, or me again. So I'm freaking out. My character is now completely helpless in the hands of five strangers and that's a horrible scenario to even contemplate. My uncle asks me if I'm okay and my foolish 16 year old self says yes because I didn't want to ruin anyone's fun or cause trouble for him. The DM goes through what the rest of the group does. There's some role playing, they realize she's missing and track her down etc. When they find her, she's still asleep, no clothes, and tied to an altar. Uncle speaks up at this point. He and the DM have a quick private chat and the DM comes back and says actually I just have no armor. But the damage was already done. Luckily, with my character out of commission, I was able to just sit quietly and deal with my panic as the others took care of the werewolf cultists. After the encounter, Uncle realizes I'm very much not okay and ends the game. I don't remember exactly how the post-game argument went down, but there were some choice moments. The DM revealed that werewolves could spread the curse by sleeping with someone on the new moon, and that's what they were going to try to do with my character. But don't worry, he'd planned for us to win before that happened. 
The woman who had flirted with us was their last victim, and the bed sheets were supposed to be our clue to that. Gross, right? He hadn't expected me to join, and he also hadn't expected me to have the only female character in the party. Being into women had thrown a wrench in his plan because he was going to try to get the five guys to convince a female PC openly and honestly to become a werewolf. And lastly, he had this to say. I'm not gross. I had to think like an evil person and this is what an evil person would do. I want to clarify three things before ending this story. Rightly or wrongly, 16 is the legal age of consent in my country. And while much of this was extremely creepy, none of it was physical and none of it was illegal. It might be tempting to blame my uncle for not looking after me properly as the responsible adult at the table. He certainly blames himself. However, I don't want to see any attacks against him. He is the kindest, sweetest soul you can imagine, and I honestly don't think it crossed his mind stuff like this would come up in a game, and when it did, he was the one that put a stop to it. Unfortunately, by this age, I was already an assault survivor, but I, as a 16-year-old girl, was not going to divulge that to a group of my uncle's friends. So some of this was the DM stepping on landmines he didn't know existed. So I guess there are two morals to this story. As a DM, never ever use trauma as a casual plot point because you don't know who you're going to hurt. Even when it's difficult, speak up when something makes you uncomfortable or just leave. Someone at that table will have your back and help you or you're at the wrong table and no game is more important than you and your mental health. The DM was completely inflexible and didn't know how to read the room or even take another's feelings into consideration. This is especially apparent when stating that none of this is his fault and that he was just doing his job. I can see one simple way to fix this huge issue that he came up with. Which is, why not just have the werewolves act like normal biting werewolves? Case closed. What do you all think about this situation?